My name is Ben Tallman, and I'm on the CropX support team. Today, we're going to show you some of the interesting things we can look at when we use the irrigation capabilities within the CropX system. When you log into CropX, you can see there's a bunch of different types of information you can get here, from recommendations to ET sensor status, soil moisture status, rafts, nitrogen leaching, your sensor status, crop details, and disease advice. However, what we're really going to focus on here is the irrigation features, which means we're really going to be looking in at the soil moisture status. We're going to go ahead and open this here, and we can see that we have a filter here where we can look at fields based on their status. We're going to go ahead and choose to look at one of these fields right now. When I've gone ahead and opened up the field, I'm brought to the field summary page. We can see the current crop status, the soil moisture status, the weather, crop X insights, the VWC graph or the pro profile sum graph, which one you get depends on your preferences. We'll have activities logged here and we'll see the active sensor that we have at the moment. Really I wanna bring your attention to is the soil moisture status or the rainbow bar. This is using the set points that we have, our refill point and our full point, and then plotting our current profile sum to see where it lies on the continuum between the two. We could see we're in the upper half of the optimal zone, which means we really don't need to irrigate right now. We could see that status here with the larger raindrop. Below it, we have a small raindrop showing our profile sum as it stood yesterday, and above it, another small one here showing what our projected soil moisture status for tomorrow will be based upon expected weather and crop water usage. We can go ahead and get additional information here by clicking sensor data and look at the graphs. This main graph here is our profile sum. The profile sum is the graph that is going to dictate that soil moisture status. And you can see here our current level here in terms of how many inches of water we have on the, on the profile of the sensor. And we can see where our full point is and our refill point is in relation to those two. The soil moisture status here or VWC graph is going to show us the individual data points that were used to calculate that profile sum. We also provide you with a stacked graph showing you the estimated VWC levels for every two inches from 18 inches to the soil surface. We're going to go ahead and zoom in on our profile sum graph. We have some great tools here where we can go ahead and zoom in by just clicking and dragging. This is useful if you want to focus in on a couple of days. Another way you can go ahead and focus on a certain period within your graph is you could just go ahead and choose a custom date range. We can look at the full season, the last week, or the month here, which is our current status here for the default. We can also use a custom date range. We're now gonna to navigate to a different field here. I'll go ahead and click the fields tab up top, which is gonna show us the fields here sorted by their soil moisture status. We can go ahead and filter here by their status. So if we want to look at the fields that are in refill, optimal, and full only, we can go ahead and do so. Usually you're gonna see the refill fields up top, but right now none of the fields are in that status. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the pond field here. It's one of the fields we frequently use for demonstrations. Again, we can see we have our profile sum and our soil moisture bar here. This particular field is near full, and in fact, the projection over the next week is that it's going to remain in the upper end of the optimal zone. The main feature I want to highlight here is the CropX Insights. The CropX Insights are taking this information we have from the CropX sensor and using our algorithms to go ahead and give you an automated recommendation. We could see that very clearly it's telling us do not irrigate. And if we go ahead and read the card, it gives us the reasons why. We could see that our moisture status is currently near the full point and that it would be very inefficient and in fact could cause some harm to the field if we were to irrigate it at this point. We could see there, in fact, there's also very little storage capacity within the field and that there's basically no benefit to irrigating now. And we can also save money by delaying our irrigation at this particular point. These CropX insights can be very helpful to you and can help you take all the data that's coming off our powerful CropX sensors and help you get a concise and simple understanding of what action should or should not be taken based upon the data in your field. I'd now like to bring your attention to the agenda. This is where you're gonna go ahead and see various tasks that are on your field. 
Right now, this field is plugged into the DTN Weather Network, which is our third-party weather plugin that gives us information such as rainfall events. If you actually have a rain gauge in your field, the rain gauge will overwrite these events. But even if you do have that rain gauge, you'll still see the forecasted rain events showing out for the next week based on what the weather is expected to be in your particular field. What's really nice here is you can go ahead and log events as they've occurred. So if you did an irrigation, you can go ahead and log that as a task. So we click new up here, choose task. We'll go ahead and mark that we did a one inch irrigation and we'll say that we did it yesterday. We'll go ahead and mark that save the record and now you can see that we've noted that we did an irrigation this will show on any end of season reports and can be used for tracking the amount of water that you've applied during the season mm -hmm.